and since then I'm hooked uh, at this uh, yeah, power platform now. And then you have my contact information here. Um, I will have it on the later slide as well, so feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Um, I actually will turn off the camera because I had some network issues uh, earlier to not uh, compromise anything. Um, so let's start. I, I tried to hold my presentation as short as possible to have more time for the demo. In this session, you will learn about preventing a form from saving if your uh, PCF um, or your data is not the correct one you want to have. We will take a look at how to use uh, images in PCFs and uh, in addition a bit of dynamic CSS. For example, I have one, one PCF that um, shows a conversation in a WhatsApp-like uh, manner. And there you, you can change the color of the messages um, so to, to fit your, um, yeah, the, the colors of the company. Uh, and that's it, uh, it's handled via um, normal um, parameters uh, while configuring the PCF in a model-driven app. And that's with dynamic CSS. So we will take a look at this one. We will start with the prevent saving uh, or prevent the form of saving. What we have to do there is um, we have to add an additional field to option field. We have, have to bound it to our PCF as a second um, value. Uh, we have to populate a new, new property and add additional field to, to our form as well. And then we have to actually prevent the save. At the moment, we cannot prevent it directly out of the PCF. Uh, we have to use either a business rule or JavaScript. Um, and there was actually a different approach from Diane. Um, I can share this as well. Uh, so now I am unmuted again. Thank you. Yeah. And um, yeah, you can share the link as well. So there are different approaches. I will show one of them, uh, but they are separate. So let's directly go into the demo for that one. I will just switch to my environment. So that's my um, yeah, development environment I have in our playground. Um, I have added some, some fields. This, those two are the ones we want to, to test now. Uh, it's already configured uh, PCF here. Let's open this very quick, if it is going quick. Okay, we let it open and we switch to the. Uh, um, so basically, we have a, a normal input felt. I can type whatever I want to, save it, and uh, if I reload the next time, it's um, it's there again. So it's at the moment the PCF is just imitating a normal uh, text free text input. Um, what we want to do is that we have to, to write a certain uh, input. To do that, I have opened my PCF already, and we'll, we want to add some, some more stuff. First of all, we take a look at the manifest, and here we have to add another property, uh, which we will bound to um, a two option set. Hey, hey Benedict, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, but I know um, it's very hard to read the screen. So if, if there is a possibility of zooming in, it would be good for people to see what, what is actually getting typed. Thanks. Yeah. Do you know how to zoom in in uh, so, uh, Visual Studio Code? Uh, just, just hold Control and then uh, scroll your mouse. No, it's not zooming uh, in. Control plus. Control plus, yeah. Control plus. Thanks. Control plus. Yes, here we are. Thank you. Hope it's better. Um, so I will just copy the one I've prepared. 
So what we basically have here is a new field which will be bound to a two option field um, and it's not required. Maybe you don't want to do it. And it's the name is number valid. Next thing to do is in our TypeScript file, we have to add um, a new value. Uh, so or new variable, which holds the information whether or not our input is um, valid. And then I have a function on input change, which will be triggered whenever you write something in the um, in the input. And here we want to say uh, we want to have our own yeah our input, which is um, uh, the correct one. So if uh, our input elements value. Get this one uh, is uh, like I don't know demo input. Then we want to set our um, valid to true, and otherwise we want to set it false. So. Um, now we, we set the internal number or the internal uh, value to true or false, but we also have to give it back to our bounded field um, when the, the output is requested. So we write here, um, we can say input valid and I change it there as well. Because it's not a number, so um, and this should be our input valid. Let's do it like this. So and now it's not uh, knowing that there is a new field, so we have to build first. We have here input valid two options. Uh, yeah, I think so. The control manifest file is not saved. And uh, oh, yeah, thank you. Thanks. Yes, perfect. <laughs> yeah, looks better. Let's push it to the environment as well. Take it down. What should happen is now when it's pushed, um, it should change the input valid field uh, depending on uh, whether or not I type in demo input or not. Uh, for that, I have to change my configuration here um, when it's pushed then because we have to bound uh, the, the new two option field as well. It's not the fastest one now, it's here. So we open the response uh, field where I have added uh, my PCF already. And now we have additional field here, which is the input valid, uh, which should be bounded to one of uh, two option set. Um, so we do that, save and publish. And then whether 
I write in something here, it should uh, change it to yes or no. Yeah, so it's no now, and if I write demo input, it should be yes. So now we have a, a two option field, which changes to yes or no, depending whether or not the input is correct. Um, the next step is to uh, have a business rule or a JavaScript, for example, that looks at this input and then if it's yes, uh, you could save, and if it's no, preventing the save. Because now I can save, even though I write in something else, I still can save. And that's a thing we don't want to have. So let's create a business rule. And uh, we take condition field is valid or input valid equals no. And then we add a new show error message on our field response. Input is not valid. Activate this one. Yes. And retry. So now it already says no, input is not valid. And even if I change it, I'm not able to save because there's an error on some field. So I have to write in input, demo input, my error will disappear and I can save. The same thing could be achieved by a JavaScript. Um, I have prepared something for that, like in a cooking show. And uh, let's see. We add a new file. Uh, where are we? Demo, oh, yeah. Demo. Yeah. It is uh, JavaScript. Yes, save. Oh, I have a space in between here. That was the problem. And um, so we have only a function that will um add a, an error whenever it's uh, the field is no hopefully this works directly so it should achieve the same same thing um but in the javascript you could um translate your your message to different user um languages which is not possible in uh, in a business rule. So that's an advantage if you use uh, JavaScript in this case. Uh, I have published, I think. So let's add this one, and then we make form on save at function pass in this one. Crossing the fin fingers now. Um, yeah. So the same thing we have uh, we have changed to no, and um, we had an on save. So when I click on save, my um, JavaScript is triggered and will create an error if this one is no. So again. I can only save when I have a demo input here. And um, like I mentioned, the, the good thing with the JavaScript in this case is you could translate your message. Um, 
for different languages the user is using, if you have an installation with different languages. Good. This was the first one. Let's see. Are there any questions yet? There's just one question uh, now. Yeah. Uh, do you use, uh, this is from Sumit Kumar, and the question is, do you use any kind of framework for developing PCF like XRM Toolbox? No, no, I don't. Then let's see use of images. If you want to do this one, you first have to add an image file to our PCF. Uh, we have, have to load the image via get resources uh, API inside of PCF, which will return a base 64 uh, string, uh, which contains the, the, um, the image. We get, generate the data URL, and then we set this data URL to the image. Um, you could also set it to some JavaScript, uh, but now we, we just take a look at um, setting it for, for an image. And going back to our have this slide as well. Yeah, starting with the demo. Um, so I have configured in those two fields, I have configured my image demo um, PCF, which we'll, we have here. Uh, yes, image. Here I already have added an image, which is just a, like a user, a PNG, and it's already added to my resources in the control manifest. Um, so here's the icon demo uh, configured already in this one. But it's not showing anything at the moment. And that's the thing we have to, to add now. Let's see. Here we are. So like mentioned in the manifest, we already have uh, configured it. We have added a resource to our image, uh, which is like an icon. And now we have to, to get it from, from the API. And uh, first of all, in the init, we will create a new um, yeah, image tag, uh, or I have already image tag. Uh, but we want to, to also fill it with something. Um, we want to have an image tag here. And now the, the idea is to fill the URL from, uh, from this image tag with our um, image file. To do this, we first get the file uh, from our resources. Um, here it is, get resources um, function. And here it is uh, important to mention, um, you see I have saved it in an, in an image folder, um, but here we have to use uh, if it would be in the same folder, because if we build our PCF, it will be moved to a, uh, to the main folder. There are no folders um, after building the one, uh, the PCF. So we still use just user.png, even though it's here in, in some folder. So it, it will be flattened uh, by the build. Set image. And then we, we bind it to a local function, uh, which we don't have yet. I will create it. And then there are some standard uh, parameters for those. And yeah, show error is just, we, we need some, some error handling as well. Um, so, oh, wait, that's, so now what it basically does it first we, we define which resource we want to load. Then we have a, a success function and an error function we have to have to bind. So those two we have to create. And 
then we have to append our image to uh, the context container and this image element. So like mentioned, we, we have to write two functions, set image and uh, show, show arrow. Um, so set image will get um, Yeah, that's a standard. So the, this function has to have uh, uh, um, those the following parameters. Uh, should update output, which is a boolean and a file type, which is a string. And here you see the file type is PNG because our file is a PNG. And then obviously we have the file content. Uh, which is also a string. Uh, like mentioned, it, uh, it will be a base64 encoded uh, string. And then we want to generate uh, uh, image URL. To do that, yeah. let an image URL be a string. And another function which really generates the, the URL and takes both the file content and the file type. We create this one later and then we take our image and just add the image URL as the source. Second one we have to create is the generate image source URL function, which we get a file type as mentioned and the file content, a string as well. And what does it say here? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. And then it just returns, we return data image, uh, plus our file type. Mm. And base 64. Plus the file content. Basically, it, it generates a ridiculous uh, big uh, yeah, URL or, or a string, which will be placed in our image URL. Um, and it's at base 64 encoded. So if I run this one, the build and then deploy it, it should show our image twice. And um, I have I have added some some CSS just to to have some height and width of the images. Pushing it. I never noticed that my uh, output here is in Swedish, actually. Good. It's publishing back here. So now it should show our image twice. Um, once, or uh, both of them in like 100 pixel width and height. Yes. Yeah, here are those both. And now let's um, go back to, to the presentation for a short, short time. And the third thing we, we want to talk about, or I want to show you, is how to use dynamic CSS in a PCF. To do that, we will add a single line input. 
Uh, in this one, you can the, the user or the, the administrator who configures the PCF can present uh, uh, H or CSS valid color, either if it's hex or um, RGB or RGBA or whatever. And we will get this value and generate the custom CSS and add this custom CSS to the container. Let's see how this one is done. So go back to our index file, or first we, we start with the manifest. Here we want to add a different property, which is, here we are, hey, uh, which is another input. Um, And this input is uh, is our test color, and is a single line of text. And it's just normal input; it's not bounded or anything, and but it's not required. Then we um, in the init we just add another demo diff, just add some text. Um, document create element and our demo div inner html should be demo text for now um, and then we do a container append child and we append our demo div so after that, we create or we, we load our um, test color. And therefore, we get our context parameters um, test color, which is not there yet. And the row of that, if it's present, we just take it. Otherwise, we have something uh, standard, some standard color, maybe. And then we create a new style tag. Create element style like this. And then we add to our style in HTML. And this should be some of our, uh, here we are. So the color of, uh, of the diffs should be test color. This CSS will change the color of every diff in the, on the site. So we have to, to scope it a bit. Um, for that, we can just use, um, Demo, which is the namespace of our demo. Uh, and then we have to append it to the container as well. Maybe we do it like and have our style at the beginning. If we build it now, it should take uh, show our text in uh, what is it? Maybe um, it should add a text demo text to both of the images uh, below both of the images and show um, show them in in a red color. Because we have not configured the test uh, the test color variable, um, so it, it takes the the standard value. Thank you. 
reloading this one. Yeah, like I mentioned, so it's it's a red color for both of them because we have not configured it other. If we now go in here or yeah and configure a color at one of those. Um, they should still have the same color afterwards because both of those diffs are have the namespace demo because it's the same PCF. Um, so let's do something here. Maybe I uh, take green. For one of both, we take green now. Since it was the first one, it should still be red. Both of them. Um, yes, if we now take like maybe blue for the last one, both of them should be blue. And that leads us to the next part you want to cover. And that's um, manually scoping of your PCF. So if you do some CSS and um, this one is dynamically, you, you need to scope them in a different way to allow the users to, to have different colors configured if the same PCF is several times on the same page. And this one um, could be managed by adding a custom or, or a random ID to your PCF. And to do this, I have created a function, uh, create ID. It just takes the length and then generates a random, random ID out of those um, characters here. Um, Important to mention is that a CSS class cannot start with a number. Uh, that's why I only have like uh, a low and uh, uppercase. Uh, uh, yeah. And then I have to take a look at my notes. Uh, Here we are. Um, I will create a random, uh, random ID. Oh yeah, create. Um, maybe seven long. And this one has now to be be added both to our. Um, as an ID to our container and to our CSS so that we have some, some scoping. So we just say container. Is our random ID. And then a demo. Um, we do it here. It should only target our diff, which has uh, our random ID as SDID, and only those diffs, diffs that, in addition, also are um, demo um, of class demo. We can make it a bit more specific if you have different um, demo or different um, PCFs in the same namespace. Uh, for this one, is icon demo component is the name of the of the PCF. If you push this one now, um, one of the the texts should be green and one of the texts should be blue because we have a scoping pair uh, for for each PCF or for each, each instance of the PCF, better to say.
Mm. Let's see here. Yeah, so now we have uh, scoping here. If you look at this one, uh, let's see. I have to make it bigger maybe. Now it's really small, I know. I can. Uh, where are we? Here. So it has an ID here. Um, and the same idea is here in our style. And that's how we how we have different colors here, because it's really just targeting the one PCF and not both of them, because we have a unique uh, identifier for each of them. Um, are there any, any questions? Yeah, there's one from Diana. Uh, and this is uh, when you were showcasing the um, the save functionality, the prevent save functionality. And her question is, um, sorry, just scroll down. Hold on, bear with me. If you use a Boolean attribute that is required, you don't need business rules or JavaScript. You just need to set the Boolean value or Null or not null. I think you started to saying that, but I guess because background noise, I didn't get what you uh, yes. hear it yeah. completely. So basically, she wants to know what's your preference, or and you, know, you don't need code, right? No, you don't need code. That's true. Um, you you can just like like she mentioned, you can just null the the additional um, two option set, and if this one is required, then it, it's not possible to save. Uh, but with code or business rules, you can you can show a, a error message that is more saying something, because right. the two option field is just a helper field, and for an end user it might not be, um, uh, yeah, not be clear if uh, if the error is there. This field which they don't see is required, probably. But you could also do it like if you have the, the input field as required and now this one, um, then this could be could be a solution. But then you could have it like um, if you go back here, uh, let's see. So you could populate the, the new input or the, the stuff they have they have written here only to the underlying uh, data if it's the correct value. But this could be a bit um, confusing for the end user as well, because they see that they have inputted something. But if you save it, it just says that the input is required. But for the user, there is input there. Um, but in the underlying um, um, input or in the underlying value, it there is no input. Uh, so let's say if you, where are we? Uh, it's the wrong PCF. <laughs> Uh, if you here in the get output, for example, um, say that if this one, then we want to look like this. So and else, you do it like, for example, this. So this means that. If the output is true, then we we send the output or the, the input to our underlying um, uh, structure. Otherwise, we just null it. But if you do this one, then the user will see input. They have inputted something, but the underlying structure they don't see is empty, which will be confusing for or could be confusing for the for the user. I would say. Yep. Um, cool. Uh, there are, so Diana also posted a message. Uh, if you guys want to check out the NPM packages for CSS classes or JSS classes, uh, it's a nice link. I've been using that a lot as well. So um, yeah, you can go to that link and then go through CSS or JSS as well. Uh, the other question is from Paul. Uh, and the question is, uh, can PCF controls uh, added to model driven apps being pulled through D65 portals? And I believe that's already been answered uh, by Victor. Uh, Victor, you want to chime in on that if you're still available? Yeah, I think so. I I've, I am not uh, the uh, portal expert, but as far as I know, at the moment, we cannot add PCFs to portals, as far as I know. But maybe Victor can answer this one uh, later. 
or a detect. Yeah. Yeah, I just hey saw. Yeah, sorry um, to answer that question. Uh, Victor's uh, going to be back shortly. Uh, but to answer that question, uh, th um, in short, unbound, only unbound PCF controls will um, will be supported in, in portals for the time being. Uh, but, but that's just to answer that question. Thanks. Thanks, mm -hmm. guys. Thank you, guys. Perfect. So once again, I wrote my contact information here. So feel free to contact me um, at GitHub. Um, yeah, or in my GitHub repository, I I have a PCF for all the stuff I I talked about now. So you can take a look at the code there, if you want to. And if there are any questions, just uh, reach out to me. Hi, my name is Austin. Thank you. Hello. Yep. Uh, do you record this session? Yes. Uh, it's all. It's. Actually, not recorded. It's actually live on YouTube and Twitter, so you can look uh, on YouTube and Twitter as well. And yeah, the recordings will be available later on. Uh, so yeah, if that answers. Yep. Hi, and just a reminder for everyone that we, we've answered this question nearly after every single session. So uh, please, um, just um, yeah, please only um, you know uh, read your emails and uh, because we're having to answer that question every single session and. Uh, um, so yeah, um, it